Hello, welcome to our study. We are talking about Psalm 113 today, which is a very, I think, straightforward and relatively short psalm. So our outline today is pretty compact, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing that we can't learn from it. We'll talk about that in our application section. Section. If you would like the PDF outline, you can download it on our website, and there's some links to that and other things in the description. Okay, Psalm 113. We do not have a listed author for this psalm, and I have searched high, low, far, below, upwards, downwards, and I've not been able to find any New Testament passages that reference back to Psalm 113. Our next two sections are also a little bit sparse. Just one theme today, worship the Lord for his greatness and for his compassion. Now, which words do we need to define? I don't have any for Psalm 113, which is a little bit unusual, but that will quickly carry us over to the nine verses of our outline. So let's go over there and do that now. I've titled our nine verses today, Praise the Lord and Praise Him Again. Now, if you look this psalm up in some commentaries or you read anything on it, you may come across a historical note that Psalm 113 through Psalm 118 were used as part of the celebration of the memorial of the Feast of Passover. We've talked about the Feast of Passover that commemorated God bringing the people of Israel out of Egyptian slavery. And so when they celebrated that, which they did once a year, um, these psalms were often sung as part of it, which is interesting because we see Jesus celebrating or memorializing the Passover in um, in his ministry and in his lifetime. So these may have been psalms that he sang. Psalm 113, starting off this series, is really just pure worship. The psalmist began, quote, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. He wrote that God was supposed to be worshipped, quote, from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun until its setting. The Lord's glory exceeds the heaven and no one or no thing is comparable to him. God should be admired for his greatness. However, there's another characteristic of God that God that makes him worthy of worship in this psalm, and that is his compassion. So although God is incredibly great above any of us, the psalmist writes here that he still notices those who aren't great on earth, those who are downtrodden, those who are impoverished. It says that he takes the needy and the poor, he lifts them out of their struggles, and he makes them princes. He also says towards the end that God cares about women who are struggling with barrenness or childlessness, and he honors them by giving them children and making them mothers. And then his final statement, his final expression at the end of the psalm is once again, praise the Lord in verse 9. All right, so that takes us down to our application. What can we learn from the psalm of praise? Well, one thing that this taught me, and one thing I guess I've been learning, uh, is that we need to try to remember to worship God and to praise God even when we don't need something. Now, why do I say that? Well, for some, including myself, uh, our, our worship is almost always accompanied by a request. We pray to God and we, we praise him. Maybe there are statements of worship in that prayer. But the only reason that we remembered to pray and praise in the first place is because we needed to ask God for something. I have some kind of a need, and so I pray, and I preface my request with statements of praise. Now, don't get me wrong, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and God says that he wants us to come to him with our requests and with our needs. But you'll notice that in Psalm 113, there's no request that's attached to the psalmist's worship. He just was overflowing with this desire to tell God how great he is. So for application, it's good to praise God along with every request that we make to him, but we should also praise him purely for the sake of worshiping him because of how good his nature is and how good he has been to us. And we see those blessings on a daily basis all around him. Let's remember to see them and then to give thanks for them. Not because we need something in that moment, but because we are appreciating how good our God is.